James Kaufman, World News Report today. Ladies and gentlemen, today is July 17th, 2023, 6.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we have what looks like a double M flare that's just busted off our sun here. We had a M flare initially, Looks like it came in right about an M 2.7 perhaps. And we have just seen an M5 flare. M4.93. Let's see what NASA has to say. NASA is calling this an M5.01 solar flare. The flare that preceded that one was an M2.7. That's what NASA is calling out at 2241. That came from Sunspot AR3363, although the second M flare has not gotten a designation as of yet from NASA. But we will try to see where it came from. We are also currently under geomagnetic storm conditions here via the estimated planetary KP index, which is the one that NOAA and NASA has just refurbished and upgraded. We also see that we've been in space weather conditions on the College KP Index and the Fredericksburg and Boulder have both shown nine hours of geomagnetic disturbance, but no geomagnetic storms. Officially, we're in a geomagnetic storm currently. NASA came out earlier and said that the actual storm, the Cannibal CME, had already hit. I'll read that for you guys shortly. Heading over to GOES ultraviolet imager at 195 angstroms it does appear that both flares both the strong m flares that we're talking about were generated by ar3363 although earth facing sunspot ar3372 is now more complex than the one that just popped off the two large m flares and it's directly earth facing I will say that Russia has forecasted heavy flaring for today and tomorrow. And they're talking about sunspot AR3372. While we're here, I'm going to read what Noah put out this morning. Arriving a full day earlier than expected, a coronal mass ejection hit Earth's magnetic field on July 16th. The impact at night. 1920 UTC time caused a 20 NT jolt in the USGS's magnetometer at Fredericksburg, Virginia in a G1 class geomagnetic storm. More CME impacts are possible on July 17th and 18th due to multiple recent eruptions from Big Sunspot AR3363. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we were told, and I'm going to get to it, that these two flares on the 14th, this one right here, followed by the flare on the 15th, this one right here, would cause the cannibal CME. Now, since then, we've seen additional M flares, several of them. There's four, and we're having our fifth and sixth currently, most of them being from AR3363. So we have three or four more impacts that we know are inbound, although I think that this most recent double M flare may not be Earth effective. Now I say that even though our ghost satellite got hit with what they called an M flare, and then you can see the double M flare here, the first one, and then the much more powerful second one, the 5.01. That hit our D region, our lowest possible atmosphere. So there's a good chance that they could be geoeffective towards Earth as well. After all, we enjoyed the X-rays and the radiation. We know that for a fact. Currently, sunspot AR3363 is Delta Gamma. You can see it looks ferocious down here although they're calling sunspot AR3372 Beta Delta Gamma, which would be the most complex sunspot that we actually categorize. Now, with that said, 
plasma, which is supposed to be what a coronal mass ejection forms, has not gone anywhere near space territory. Started out at zero, and it looks like it peaked around or under five centimeters cubed, ten being the minimal space weather threshold. These crossovers that you see here are because of these blasts of solar wind. Now, I don't know what would cause the solar wind, and I sure don't know why they have us in a geomagnetic storm throughout this period here. We hardly have any plasma, as you can see, although solar winds do go up over 600 kilometers per second. You can see when the plasma starts to fall off, so does the temperature. I like that part of it. But what I will say is, what caused the solar winds? Any coronal mass ejection should be plasma, not solar winds. Solar winds are caused by the absence of a canopy on our sun, i.e. definition of a coronal hole. We have not seen one that's been Earth-facing, and we are currently in a geomagnetic storm, according to NASA and NOAA. But it has to do with the solar wind uptick to well over 600 kilometers per second. Here's 620 kilometers per second right here. Now, what in fact caused this? This was no solar flare, or the plasma would be elevated, as you all know. What's going on? We have to ask, as usual. I would like everyone to take a look at this SOHO updated photo at 284 angstroms. They've added a yellow haze to it, so it's very hard to make out any features. But we can see that there's some small curl holes that are being indicated here. I wish that they didn't add this haze so we could see what is going on. This was taken at 7.06 this morning, so everything is moved to the right, which would mean that this crawl hole would have to be responsible, not some kind of CME, as they have blamed. A CME, again, would bring plasma to Earth, not solar winds. Let's take a look. Real quickly, folks, this is a crawl hole and it says exactly what it does. Coronal holes appear as dark areas in the solar corona, extreme ultraviolet and soft X-ray solar images. They appear dark because they are cooler, less dense regions than the surrounding plasma and are regions of open unipolar magnetic fields. In other words, there's no canopy. This open magnetic field Line structure allows the solar winds to escape more readily into space, resulting in streams of relatively fast solar winds, and is often referred to as high-speed streams in the context of analysis of structures in interplanetary space. Now let's go look for a coronal hole at 195 angstroms, which this is. Now we're going to be able to see those blasts come out of the right side. Looks like the second one also is huge right here. Might have been a large X-class solar flare, but do you see any crawl holes that are Earth-facing? I see this sliver that just became Earth-facing here. The same photo, the same GO satellite that they showed their example on, but there's no crawl holes. And even if they're calling this a crawl hole, it would have just become Earth-facing Thus, the solar winds would not be here for a day or two. With that said, please join us at 930 for our solar weather update for the day. And hopefully we'll be able to see some of this live on LASCO that hopefully will be updated. Share, subscribe, always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.